What's up, YouTube? Brian here, and it is Bassmaster Classic weekend. And as a gear nerd and a fan of bass fishing, it's kind of a fun time because we got all these product releases, a lot of stuff coming out, a lot of stuff being announced or announced, you know, stuff we've already heard of, but is, is official now. Um, and also the actual tournament. So first off, I just want to let you guys know that tomorrow, Saturday, today's Friday, tomorrow, Saturday at noon central, my friend Hellabass, Rich Lindgren, and I are going to be doing like a live watch party for the Bassmaster Classic starting at noon central, going to about two o'clock, maybe after, I don't know, we'll see, but uh, join us. We're going to hopefully be doing a simulcast on my YouTube channel and Rich's channel, so um, keep an eye out for that. If you got time to hang out with us tomorrow afternoon, I definitely think you should check it out. So the point of this video today is we're just going to dive into a lot of the um, stuff gear equipment that was announced uh, today uh, at the start of the Bassmaster Classic. Some of the stuff we already knew about, some of the stuff I didn't know about, and uh, there's a couple of bombs that were dropped this morning by our friends at the Hookup Tackle about the new models of the Mega Bass P5 Destroyers that are going to be coming out sometime next or sometime this summer, probably, maybe by Christmas, who knows. Uh, so let's dive right into that. We're gonna jump over to the laptop here. We're gonna go through a few things. I wanna lead because I know everybody on my channel and people who follow me are, are big Mega Bass fans like myself. Uh, we're gonna just jump into this real quick. Um, ben, out of nowhere, decided to show off prototype rods today on their YouTube channel. Um, I know it's been a big talk on some of the Facebook groups and all that stuff, but let's just go down the list and let's look through a few of these. Um, there's some good things some interesting things and some uh, some other tidbits. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we now know what the P5 relaunches of the Mega Bass US Destroyer rods are going to be out of the gate. So we're getting a bunch of casting models and we're getting one spinning. Although the one spinning is pretty cool, but let's talk about it. So first off, we're seeing a return of the 110 Special. This is a rod that Universally is loved in the U.S. Destroyer lineup. I have this rod. It is fantastic. It launches jerk baits. It's great. It fights fish amazing. It's a really great rod. I love mine. I use it all the time. Um, I'm very careful with it because I know how hard some of these rods are to find right now. And now maybe I don't have to be so careful because I know it's going to be re-released in the P5 uh, blank. So that's cool. Uh, one that I'm kind of shocked that's kind of making a comeback right away is the Demos. Um, I have a Demos. I think it's great. I love the Javelin more which is the Javelin is essentially a slightly longer Deimos. However, I've heard, we'll get to this, but I've heard that the Javelin, there's two rods that weren't included in this list that are supposedly coming in 2023. So I think out of the gate, they're doing seven of these rods. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be seven new P5s coming this summer. Then there's two more that are slated coming next year, like in 2023. And those are going to be the Felissa and the Javelin. So if you're, this is what I've heard, it's a rumor, uh, but you know, I got it from a good source. But um, so supposedly if you're a Javelin fan, that is coming, but you're gonna have to wait a while. And, the, and the, for all the Felissa fans, Felissa is making a comeback apparently, but maybe 2023. So it's gonna be a while before you get those. So um, anyway, the Deimos is making a comeback that I have that rod. It's a great like kind of all around moving bait rod. Spinner baits, um, it's good at. G chatter baits, uh, single hook moving stuff. It's pretty good. It's not my favorite rod. I actually like the um, Javelin way more personally. Uh, I pull that out. I actually use the Deimos mostly for swim jig rods. So for throwing quarter out swim jigs, uh, the Deimos is awesome at that. Uh, the FMJ is making a return, but it's getting a spec change. So they're making the FMJ longer, which is interesting because one of the one of the complaints with the FMJ is exactly like how much of a broomstick that thing is. I had an FMJ and I broke two of them. One I broke fishing and one I stepped on. So um, I've had my trials and tribulations with the FMJ. I'm excited to see the new version because it looks like it's going to be a straight type of like medium heavy, medium heavy plus kind of rod, 7.3. To me, this rod is going to be hopefully competing with the NRX 873 uh, as maybe a great dragging rod. Let's see how the action is. If the FMJ, if the new FMJ is a little softer and not as broomsticky as the old FMJ, I think at 7 foot 3 inches they're going to have a hit on their hands. The new one, the BMJ, so I'm guessing that stands for Big Metal Jacket because the FMJ is Full Metal Jacket. BMG, I'm just going to, I'm going to call it Big Metal Jacket. Why not? Who cares? Um, 
This is gonna be a 7.5 F7 that's rated up to an ounce and a half. So this is gonna be a slightly bigger, heavier, longer version of the FMJ. I'm guessing this is targeted for those guys who are throwing those like half ounce to three quarter ounce football jigs. Uh, maybe uh, big Carolina, maybe Carolina rigging. It's probably gonna be a good Carolina rig rod. So uh, this is a new model. This is not something that they did in the old lineup. It's very, it seems on paper sort of similar to the Bunker Buster. Although the Bunker Buster was like a 7.7. Uh, it was a little longer. So I'd say it's kind of, maybe it's a, a bumper, a bunker buster. Uh, I don't know. It seems like they took the FMJ, this new version. Uh, and obviously the, the comparison. So the, the FM, the new FMJ is probably a co a clone or a copy of, or not, Mega Bass doesn't clone or copy people, but it's probably going to be comparable to the NRX 873. And I'm guessing this F7, F5 BMG is going to be more comparison to the 894 jig rod from uh loomis but i have no idea it could be super parabolic i guess we're going to find out who knows um the mark 56 this is going to be the uh swim bait light swim bait rod um I, the other one was called what mark 48 so i don't know the swim bait rods that much i'm not a big swim bait guy so um i'm sure people are excited to see these this mark 56 come in and i also really want to talk about this one they are bringing in a p5 flipping stick yeah so you guys have flip one ounce to you know ounce and a quarter, uh, maybe even three quarters of an ounce are gonna have a rod in the P5 lineup to use. I did notice that the power is a little less than the uh, Warhammer. I believe the Warhammer was a 711 eight and a half, eight or eight and a half, but it was definitely had a higher power than the Jungle. So the cool name, Jungle 7, sounds sweet. Uh, it looks like it's a slightly lighter power than the Warhammer. I love the Warhammer. I have it, and I used the crap out of it last season, flipping uh, three-quarter to, to one ounce. Fantastic flipping stick. Super tip-heavy. Um, not the best balance rod in the world, but power for days. So I'm, I'm excited to see this Jungle uh, Jungle 7. I, I, I'm i wondering how they're going to do the handle. They're going to do the full cork thing. I mean, you got to really balance a flipping stick out properly. I'm hoping it's got top to bottom double footed guides. I hope it's as overbuilt as the Warhammer was. Um, so anyway, so you you heavy braid flipping folks are probably gonna be pretty excited by that jungle seven. So moving over to spinning, uh, the only one coming back is the Addermine. Now I have the original Addermine and I will not be going out and upgrading to the P5 because the handle on the old Addermine is a gazillion times better. I, I mean, this is a personal preference. Some people love the P5 spinning rod handles. I don't, I don't hate them, but I don't love them. Uh, in fact, I would prefer the Orochi Levante old Mega Bass P5. I'm sorry, the old Mega Bass Destroyer handles are way better. So anyway, we're getting a reboot of the Addermine. People are going to be super stoked because now they don't have to spend four or five hundred dollars or maybe even more on a used Addermine. So all you folks out there that are waiting around for the Addermine, um, it's coming. It's making its comeback. I think that's pretty sweet. So we're getting a lot of the good ones back. Uh, we're missing the Javelin. We're missing the Felissa. Sadly, RIP to the Automat. The Automat is not making a return. I've heard that the Automat is dead and buried. So if you have Automats and you love your Automat, treat it well because if you break it, you are SOL. That is not a rod that is coming back. Also, what I notice is missing is the Brigand. I don't know if they're bringing the Brigand back. It sounds like the Brigand is also dead. However, you can go to the Orochi and get like the Enforcer. So they have like big heavier spinning rods already. But you know, RIP to the Brigand and RIP to the Automat. Um, you guys had a good run. Uh, anyway, so let's move over to the general releases in Tackle Warehouse World. I, I'm gonna go over here just because they kind of collected all of the um, they collected all of the releases in one place. We're just gonna go top to bottom. I'm gonna give you some of my initial impressions on some of this stuff uh, and some of my witty commentary. Uh, so starting at the top, 13's got a bunch of crap. This is 13. They're taking their radioactive pickle. So if you're not into ice fishing, you don't know. But uh, May, 13 Fishing released a bunch of neon green ice fishing rods and reels, and they called it the pickle or the radioactive pickles. And they're pretty popular. They sell they sell a lot of them in the North Country, especially for the kids and like teenagers who are getting into ice fishing. So they're taking that whole radioactive pickle uh, design stuff and throwing it into their budget stuff. I get it. They're they're marketing towards kids and uh, they're marketing for younger people they're trying to get these price point um these price point reels to compete with like the mock the, the lose stuff and whatever so i get it i don't like it doesn't appeal to me i don't care uh whatever they got some swim baits coming out this jumped out out to me as a this trout looks a lot like a, a huddleston uh so i don't know man 
I, I, 13's not my world. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna skip past it. Uh, Abu. So Doyo is dropping some very similar reels to. To me, this just. To me, this looks like a hyper mag. I mean, uh, Abu Garcia's got their own loose hyper mag coming out, and it's more expensive. So you know, four hundred, five hundred dollars for this thing. Uh, I don't know. I'm. I don't know what material this is. I don't know if these are. To be honest, I'm not. I didn't really look that much into these. But uh, out. What is X Mag alloy frame? That must mean it's magnesium. So this is a. I'm assuming this is a magnesium reel for five hundred dollars. It better be. Uh, what's the weight on this? So the weight, four point five ounces, is light. That's like you're getting into Aldebaran ter territory. So uh, yeah, it's coming. It's coming into that Aldebaran hypermag super lightweight real category. So if you want something stupid light and you're an Abu Garcia fan, uh, that's interesting. Only eight three to ones. Um, hey, this might be something you're into. Uh, not what I'm into personally, but hey, I'm sure there's going to be uh, people who are into it out there. They're also expanding that Xenon line. Uh, so they got a $300 price point one, a $400 price point one, and a $500 price point one. Uh, so I'm guessing the MG probably stands for ma magnesium. I'm guessing this one's magnesium as well for 500 bucks. So uh, let's see, is this one uh, heavier? So it was 4.3 ounces. Yeah, so this is a little heavier. So this is that 5.1. I'm guessing the spool is probably different on the, probably, I'm guessing there's a spool difference between this LTX and this X. I don't know. But either way, if you're an Abu fan, you're getting some new high-end Abu reels. So you're probably pretty stoked. Arc's got a crank and a swim jig, whoopity eating doo uh, Beast Coast. Uh, a lot of people are talking about this Chatter Shad. Uh, this thing actually looks kind of cool. It's a, sp it's a split tail um yamamoto zako i mean you could take a zako and just cut it down the middle of the tail and could probably get the same effect uh but you know there's a lot of people who are into beast coast they have a lot of codes so people get a lot of discounts on beast coast fishing products um so hey if you're a big chatterbait thrower and you want something a little different for a trailer beast coast has got you covered um you know it is what it is five bucks pack uh, so that's kind of cool something something to think about uh flipping delight this looks like your average everyday beaver nothing special there Another swimming jig. Oh, although this is tungsten. I want to I want to shout out real quick on these. I looked at some of these colors, and they look fantastic. I love this. This this is called Dope Gill. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a, I love that color. That looks really great. Um, really cool. It's kind of got a dark blue in there or something like that. That that's a sweet color. That's something you don't see every day. Uh, the tungsten heads is a little unique. You don't see very many tungsten swim jigs. So that's kind of cool. It's, it's a little unique. Um, let's see. Let's look at a couple of these other colors. Eh, nothing special. Uh, the little pink is kind of cool. Blue head. All right, I like this one. Cajun Crush, kind of cool. Um, I'll, I'll give a shout out to Beast Coast. They're good at the aesthetics. Uh, your average black and white crappie color. I don't know. Anyway, some of these are kind of neat. The juice is just white with oh, a little crystal flash in there. Hey, I, I'm never going to say no to a person who, a company that puts crystal flash in their swim jigs. I'm assuming that what it, that's what it is. Crystal flash should be in every swim jig. Uh, yeah, Reburn Red, kind of cool. Pro Pumpkin. Anyway, I love this dope gill. I would pick up this color. I think it looks sweet. There's a lot of trailers you can put on there. So anyway, Tungsten Swim Jigs coming from Beast Coast. That's kind of cool. Uh, Crusher Lures, never heard of them, don't care. Daiwa. Okay, so let's talk about Daiwa real quick. Daiwa has completely gotten sp uh, posterized by Shimano at this classic. Shimano's got tons of cool stuff uh, that they've already teased it in Japan. Same with um, Daiwa, but uh, I'll say the Daiwa releases don't even hold a candle to the Shimano re re releases this spring. So we'll go through it. Uh, we all know there's a new exist. It looks like a cyclone or a, Zy a cyclone, whatever the robots are from Battleship. Uh, or Battlestar Galactica. Wow, I, I screwed that up. But anyway, I'm not a big fan of the looks of the ex this exists. I mean, honestly, I'm not buying seven, eight hundred dollars spinning reels anyway. So like, my opinions on like the Stellas or the uh, exists don't really matter because I am not a customer of these. I like nice spinning reels, but I am not spending eight hundred dollars uh, for inshore bass fishing. Um, this this reel is made for battle against saltwater fish or inshore or redfish, big hard charging fish, stripers. I, I honestly think these kinds of reels are complete and utter overkill for catching two, three, four pound largemouth or smallmouth. Although they are fun and it's nice to flex on people when you have these kind of nice reels. But honestly, aesthetically, it doesn't do anything for me. I'm sure the technology is amazing. It's got the monocoque body as usual. Uh, you know, this went light. Uh, this is going like the Stella added weight this year, but the exist is still the lighter version. Like the light, if you want the, the high end, super lightweight reel, the exist is going to, um, 
beer jam. But the price also went up, man. Uh, 160 it went up sixty dollars. I think these were eight hundred dollar, seven ninety nine or seven fifty or something. So there's definitely a price bump going on here uh, with the new exist. So if you're an exist fan, that kind of sucks, but you know it is what it is. Price increases are just um, the 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 thing this year. Now you also got the smaller Tatulas. You got the Tatula eighty. You got the seventy. People are super excited about these. I think there's gonna be a lot of people excited about these. Uh, the seventy. Uh, I believe these are based on one of them's based on the Daiwa arid or air reel i don't know i don't throw a lot of small bait cast reels and i don't throw bfs or that kind of stuff so i'm not really into the 70 size reel so i don't know that much about these it's just not i, I got big hands i'm a bigger dude uh i don't i don't really buy 70s but i know people are pretty pumped about these and you gotta admit a, a new spin cast reel hell yeah this looks cool as it if i was a kid i would be super into these <laughs> i mean it's 80 bucks it's kind of expensive spin cast reel but uh i saw someone on instagram was saying it's funny how Daiwa has a $80 spin cast coming out and a, you know, almost thousand dollar spinning reel, but not much in between. There's not a lot of, not a lot of range here in the Daiwa releases. So it is what it is. Dobbins, they got this Maverick series rod coming out, which I, I, I find puzzling because uh, they already have the Colt, which is like $80 and they have the Fury, which is $120. So this kind of squeezes in between like the Colt and the Fury. I mean, does Dobbins really trying to get like a different rod line for every $20 increment in the price ranges? I mean, that's just like, that's crazy to me. So are they going to have like a seven, are they going to have like a $60 rod and then a $170 rod? I mean, they probably already do. Isn't it the Caden? But anyway, <coughs> if you want lots of options across all of the price ranges, Dobbins has you covered. I also noticed Dobbins got more uh, generic reels coming out. I mean, these are probably just Doyos rebranded. I don't know. Nothing's fancy. If you're buying hundred dollar Dobbins, uh, reels, uh, you got issues. Do not buy these things. You're crazy. Um, you know, there's way better options from companies that actually make reels and don't just slap their name on other people's reels. Just saying. All right. So Loomis, we got, uh, CGX. Uh, so the CGX line came out with the inshore rods. I'm sure people are excited about that. The CGX is people don't seem to be too excited about CGXs. I don't see any of them out in the world. I didn't see people buying or getting them excited. Um, I don't know if that's that rod line has been a hit or not with Loomis. I'd like to, I'm actually going to talk to one of my shops that sell them and see if they're like moving a lot of those things. Cause I don't think they're that popular. I, I think that launch kind of went kind of like went flat. I think it was kind of a thud. Uh, people don't seem too, too excited about the uh, GCXs in general. Gambler, this trailer looks cool. So if you're into chunks, this looks like a very narrow, slim chunk trailer, which I think a lot of, oh, they even have a junior version. That's cool. So anyway, if you're into chunks and you're kind of looking for something new, I, this Gambler kind of caught my eye and just how like narrow it is. Uh, looks like something you could, you know, it, it doesn't look like it's got flappy uh, paddles either. So this is like your more traditional straight chunk doesn't need to be on a swim jig trailer no flap no flanges or whatever so anyway i thought that looked kind of cool um garmin i'm a lawrence guy so i'm not even going to comment on the new uh live scope plus transducer i know the garmin fanboys have been freaking out about this and and thinking if they need to do an upgrade or not so anyway garmin's already ahead of the game they've already come out with their what's funny is lawrence and uh hummingbird are coming out with their rev a's like their first versions of the uh forward facing sonar and garmin's already got rev 2 out like so they're just like um you know they're they're slam dunking again on on hummingbird and lawrence uh which is kind of funny i mean one thing you guys everybody has to remember garmin is a massive company the, the amount of R&D and development dollars that Garmin has versus Simrad and versus Hummingbird is like a factor of 10. Garmin is a billion dollar giant company who makes lots of products, right? Garmin has fit, you know, they, their line of products and their worldwide reach with everything they sell trumps anything that is in Simrad and it's more specifically Hummingbird. Hummingbird is the small guy. Simrad is slightly bigger and then you got the Death Star that is Garmin above all of them. So always remember in the arms race for fishing sonar, Garmin has the bigger batter war chest uh, over anybody. So they're always going to innovate more. They're always going to have out have stuff out faster than everybody else. Um, Garmin is always going to lead the race they're like if you guys got your f1 they're like the they're like the mercedes team right like they're just ahead of everybody else they have more money more power more weapons in the in the in the in the in the war chest than simrad um it's a, all of this is a money game 
Hummingbird is the smallest. They're the low, they're the little mom and pop shop. Simrad, they're they're kind of like in the middle. And then you got Big Bad. They're you know they're they're the they're the evil empire of uh, fishing sonar right now, just because of how much money that company has overall. Anyway, uh, Geek Crack has some stuff. It's just colors. They just released a bunch of colors. Who cares? Uh, Jackal's got a bunch of stuff. I didn't really dive too deep into this, but I know that there's a new TN70. I don't know what skull shell is. It's some new material. I don't know. Uh, block ripper. So they got some new crankbaits. A lot of people have been talking about this Gantrol uh, crappy, crappy, crappy. This Gantrol crappy. Now I'm saying it. Crappy, crappy bait. My gosh. Uh, anyway, people are really excited about this. This looks pretty sweet. I think a lot of a lot of people up in the north here, we, we have a lot of crappie lakes uh, where the crappies are smaller <laughs> and the bass like to feed on them. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, I mean, down south you have giant crappies. Up here we have a lot of small crappies. So crappie is just a good feeder fish like uh, like bluegills and, and, um, and whatnot. So uh, anyway, I know a lot of people are pretty excited about that. So if you're into the Gantrol, Gantrol series, you're probably going to in, be interested in that. There's two new colors of the re-range. Uh, so this one's pretty sweet. This is a new chartreuse. This is a, they haven't had this kind of color in the Jackal Rearrange 110 uh, jerkbait line. So if you're into this, you're into, you have smallmouth lakes, you might want to pick this up. I know Omnia already has these in stock over on their website. Uh, so two new colors is Burgundy Shad. I didn't think this looked, uh, the Burgundy Shad didn't look all that, that didn't look all that interesting. It's just kind of a purple, like a smoke purple it looks like. But this Chartreuse one looks really cool if you are on uh, smallmouth lakes. You might want to check it out. Uh, they also are doing their clone of the um, of the bluegill bait. You know, this is just like everybody's doing these flat bluegill baits now. Depths kind of came out. I think did Depths come out with these first? Uh, I think they did, but I don't don't quote me on that. But this is like you know everybody's doing these like the Doe Live Gill now. Um, and now this honey nugget, uh, the honey nugget bait actually has been out in Japan for a while. I tried ordering some packs, uh, last year. And then the supplier was like, Oh, we actually don't have those in stock. So this is, this is, uh, this is the first time these I think are coming to the U S. So this has been out in, a, in, in Japan before. Cast King, don't care, blah, 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 skipping. Uh, Mega Bass Super Z3, these have already dropped on places. This is not like a new bait. Um, it is something that's been out for a little while. But it is a deeper diver version of the Z1 and Z2. I love the Z cranks. I use them. They cast really well with that LBO system. Like they're super small little cranks, but if you can really whip them uh, and get them out there away, so pretty pretty sweet. And they are twenty dollars. Uh, let's go through net bait. Um, you know, flat sided chat. Everyone's doing these now. Uh, Hog farmer. Um, it's got these, you got the depths, uh, death hatter, you got, you know, even like the dough live stick. So this, this profile plastic is becoming more and more popular. So now you got us companies like Netbait that are coming out with these, um, you know, they're going to be for free rigs for spinner bait, chatter bait trailers, whatnot. This bait fuel gel. Oh man, this has been getting so much promotion by the net bait sponsored anglers on. <laughs> if you watch major league fishing and any of those net bait sponsored guys, they have this bait fuel stuff sitting on their deck with the label turned backwards so the camera guys can make sure to get the label and whenever they're putting the baits on they're always talking about oh the secret uh, jt kenny is a uh, very much involved with the parent company of netbait and he is talking about bait fuel like it's the it's the most secret amazing uh scent gel ever created on the mlf circuit like I, I, it cracks me up because all these guys are 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 financially involved with this uh the the company was it american tackle or whatever the, i forgot the name of the parent company for netbait but anyway uh it's just another scent so this bait is weird it's like uh it's like it's like um it's like the spunk shad or death adder and a um, rage grub had a baby weird bait uh let's skip down to owner they released this uh haymaker this is an interesting hook because the hook point goes up the first thing i thought about this is you better bury that hook point into the plastic otherwise this hook point is going to catch on everything it's going to catch on mill foil so i'm just picturing flipping with this hook and this little hook the way it's pointed up like if that thing just comes out of the plastic a little man you're i'm going to be pulling up every little chunk of grass getting caught on reeds uh, it looks cool you're you're just going to have to run a big uh, in my opinion, you're probably going to need to run a big, thick, chunky piece of plastic so you can really bury that hook in there so it doesn't pop out. But as soon as that hook comes out, man, uh, you're going to be grabbing every little piece of grass and getting stuck on wood and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. could be a really sweet hook. It looks like it's very thick gauge. Uh, I love the name Haymaker. Fantastic. I don't know whoever came up with that name, but genius. Savage Gear. I'm going to skip over Savage, Savage Gear stuff because I really don't care. I'm not into their stuff. Um, 
never have been. Shimano, we all know about all the Shimano releases, man. Shimano is just blowing it out the gate this year. Um, a Tranks 150 that no one asked for. Everyone wants an update to the bigger Tranks. Uh, you got the new Stella, which has already been covered. You got the new Bantam, which has already been covered by a lot of people. Obviously, everyone's stoked about the new X Prides, uh, myself included. Uh, these coverage D or these convergence, I think these are yeah. The, what's cool is these convergence rods are travel rods. So if you're looking for travel rods, uh, Shimano has got these convergence two pieces that are coming out. They even have this four piece. I, people have been talking about this. So if you're into travel rods, you don't want to spend the big bucks on the Mega Bass um, Triza. They're those really expensive Mega Bass travel rods. This thing is only 80 bucks. This looks pretty sweet. Uh, this is kind of on my radar. Uh, let's see, what models do they have? They have a seven foot medium, seven foot medium heavy. So if you want a, look at that, 80 bucks for a seven foot medium heavy travel rod, uh, that actually looks pretty sweet. I bet you they're gonna sell a bunch of these because people are looking for nice uh, travel rods and nobody's really making them. So anyway, we got uh, the big launch of more of Shimano's hard baits. They got these Macbeth cranks and then the World Diver flash jerk baits. So these are the jerk baits that have the little spring and the, or the little piece of, um, it's, hot, uh, it's like tin foil. So there's a little piece of foil inside the bait on a spring and it jitters when it's not moving. Um, same thing with the popper. I want to get one of these poppers and see it in person because Depths has been doing this for a while where they have, Depths has a popper that has a little piece of like on a spring that wiggles when the bait is sitting still just to add some little vibration in the water. And that's kind of what the, this thing is doing as well. So Shimano definitely didn't invent this technology or this style of bait. Uh, people have been, they've already been doing it in Japan um, on some other stuff, but it's cool that's in a jerk bait. We'll check it out. This is the big one, the St. Croix Legend Tournament Bass Rods. Um, so these are the best pictures we've seen of these things. I've already done some, some content around this, but I will say that the, um, the pictures make these things look fantastic. There's a video out right now from our friends over at Omnia on their Bass Utopia channel where they actually have some of these rods. But a couple things I just want to call out. They put these aluminum pieces, cosmetic, love that, looks cool. The, the piece in the middle here, which was EVA on the Victory is foam on the casting rod, which is awesome. Love that. This lock nut looks really cool. Gotta say the styling on this thing is just sick. It looks really great. The blue is amazing. I'm glad they kept the blue in the Legend Tournament series. It looks great. Uh, I just Let's just cross our fingers and pray that the weight and the balance is right. And if it is, I think St. Croix is gonna have a big hit on their hands in that $300 to $400 price point. I think these are gonna do really well. Um, look awesome. So I love the pictures, love the cosmetics. Uh, so another thing is St. Croix does cork so much better than everybody else. Um, I'm guessing the cork on these things is going to be great. Uh, I mean, just looking at these pictures, you can't see much filler on these things. St. Croix actually gives you really good cork. Their cork on their higher end rods is fantastic. Unlike Mega Bass, Mega Bass's cork sucks, uh, in comparison to St. Croix's by a mile. Uh, in my, just in my personal opinion, I could be wrong, but just from my use and my beating on cork from other comp from lots of companies, uh, St. Croix is some of the nicest. Tackle Wars also has their stuff. So X Zone's got a few things. I I'm going to wrap this up, but X Zone's got some new colors. They're finally coming out with the color that a lot of people know from the missile bait. I mean, it's just your green, half green pumpkin, half blue. I'm surprised X Zone didn't already have this color, um, it, this green pumpkin blue um, in the. It's called Superbug in the missile world. So a lot of us up in Minnesota, we use Superbug in, in a lot of colors. Uh, so that color is actually really sick. I'm really happy that they came out with that. I will be picking some of those up. Um, also, they got this new drop shot bait that is a profile that's pretty common. I think a lot of companies have been making this for a while. Uh, this bulbous tail. It's like kind of a Hazadon shad with a bulbous tail on the end. I don't know. It's kind of, this is kind of a mashup bait between a lot of other companies like more popular baits. It looks cool. Uh, I'll definitely try it. Uh, I love me a good drop shot minnow style bait. This is something, uh, we're going to wrap it up here on the Z-Man stuff. Uh, I know that Z-Man, everyone's wondering like, why, what's SMH, shake my head. Uh, so this worm and this shaky head is, was designed by Brian Latimer. I've been watching his videos on these. And this is cool. I, I'm a big shaky head fan. I will, I will eat up any new shaky head tech or new baits or new heads. Uh, so I am, I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. So I'm definitely going to be trying... Uh, Mr. Latimer's new heads and the worms when these come in. I believe Omnia is going to be stocking these as well. So I'm, I'm kind of excited. Out of all the baits and tackle, this is the one that I will buy like 
right away. Like I'm going to use this day one in the spring. I, sh- I throw shaky heads in the spring. I love throwing uh, finesse stuff in the spring, especially around like emerging pads, um, new grass, dead grass, rocks. Uh, just, I love shaky heads. It's one of my favorite one of my favorite baits. So I'm, I'm stoked about that one. So anyway, if you made it to the end of this video, this is just a big kind of run through my thoughts and opinions on all this new classic releases, all this new stuff coming out the classic. Um, I, I hope you guys found this entertaining. Um, remember tomorrow, uh, we will be doing the live, uh, watch party for the classic at noon central on Saturday. Uh, and if you made it this far in the video, please give me a like, please give me a subscribe. I much appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great weekend.